the law. Hmm. The end of the law is, is Christ. Christ. It says the end of condemnation in Christ. Hmm. When it says that the end of the law is Christ, what it's saying is that the end of condemnation is Christ. Because the law was a law of condemnation because it found you in weakness. So what happens when Christ died, he ends the law. Now Paul says, now I can glory in that I am weak. In what head does one say in his weakness that he glories? That's why in these churches, That's why it's a mystery. they marginalize the weak. That's mm. why this is called the mystery of weakness. Hmm. I mean, the weak is still weak, but you can... Well, there Paul says, so when I am weak, then, then I am I'm strong. strong. When I am, you first have to be found in weakness. You hmm. first have to say, I am weak, but I don't have to remain there. On account of the grace of God, the gospel, I, that I'm strong, I'm weak. I can say, no, I'm weak in the flesh, flesh. but since I don't live by the flesh, I live and serve God with the mind. Then I can say, as the prophet Joel said, let the weak say, I am strong. That was a prophetic word hmm. in the old covenant. Apostle, would it be why Paul says that uh, the treasure that, that he placed in a clay, in a clay base? Oh, you should read that yes. verse. That's a marvelous verse. First letter to the Corinthians 4.10, mm. I believe. It says that we have this treasure and we are a treasure. We are spirit. We are valuable. But God had to cover it. The case is this earthen vessel. The case is the vessel. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. Notice what the purpose is. The purpose is that you are a treasure because when Christ died, Martin, the spirit, your spirit became as Christ is. Perfect. All of us were perfected with one offering forever. So in the inner man, in your spirit, you are as Christ. Hmm. Because that was the work he came to do that we holy without blemish or wrinkle and that's the way you are problem is that that treasure is in a vessel of clay with the purpose that the excellence be of the power of god hmm. that's why we have to repeat verse 11 i believe in second corinthians 12 11 notice the purpose yes. that i rejoice in insults look at what hmm. it says it says, verse 10, That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. You know what it is to be able to delight in difficulties and weaknesses? It says that the power of God is perfected in your weakness. It is to say the power of God is the gospel. So when you are in weakness... The Bible says that when you believe what the Bible says of you, there, the power of God is perfected because his power is perfect, but it's perfected mm. in you and me and the believer. The, the power, power of God. God. Apostle, and the power of God, what is it exactly? Because I've heard in some synagogues, power decline. You receive the power. Is it a miracle? Is it, uh, is it goosebumps? Those are Judaizing manifestations. Because before the power of God would descend and would perform miracles, divide the Red Sea. It would descend for certain situations, but now it doesn't descend. It's already descended and dwells in you and I. Christ, it says, in you, within, the hope of glory. So the power of God is in a mystical experience, as they say in the system. They lay hands, they anoint you with oil, and you begin to shake. Or you feel that you're levitated. That ain't the power of God. That is experiences of the flesh. Things that are manifest that may be good. I'm not saying they're bad, but the power of God isn't that. The power of God is the gospel. Mm -hmm.